celebration and we invite you to come join the fun share the magic of adventureland during our greatest season ever where you can enjoy your favorite rides shows and attractions all for one low price it's the most fun you'll have all summer come visit and see it's fun you'll never forget What's up guys, welcome back to the Dead Mall series. Today we are taking a look at the 1970s treasure in suburban Des Moines, Valley West Mall. This mall for the longest time has been on its last legs and honestly 2022 is probably its last normal year I'd say. With Von Mar confirmed to be leaving for Jordan Creek this fall and Yonkers already gone, it's truly only a matter of time for Valley West. That being said though, this is probably one of my favorite Dead Malls of all time. It was one of the first in the series and it really just has this nostalgic 70s feel with the layout and goldish coloring everywhere and the hidden ocean blue neons which make you feel right at the beach. So anyways, let's head in and see how the beautiful Valley West Mall is doing in February 2022. Valley West's story is one of troubles and defiance in the hard times. The mall was originally conceived by Minneapolis developer Frederick Watson in 1971 as Iowa's largest mall, a two-story behemoth with three anchors and 60 inline tenants. Instantly, people were excited, except for the Meredith Corporation, which would oppose the mall because they wanted to build their new corporate headquarters on the site. They would pull out, however, and once again Valley West's plans were met with heavy opposition. This time, as a developer called the Windsor Mall also wanted to build a massive mall in the area. However, the Windsor Mall would never get funding and Valley West would finally be greenlit for construction. During construction in 1974, Valley West would secure Brandeis as its initial anchor. And after another legal battle, this time trying to secure J.C. Penney, Peterson Harn von Marr would sign on as the second anchor, with J.C. Penney coming later. So one thing I want to comment on here before I go on is just how empty this mall is. I mean, I entered down by the old Yonkers wing, and it's just depressing how there's like nothing left. And the architecture here is beautiful and vibrant and there's just, there's no life left. The mall would open on August 4th, 1975, with the first phase opening with 20 inline stars and Brandeis as the sole anchor, instantly becoming a hit destination in the city as the new mall in the suburbs and the official grand opening ceremony would take place on July 28, 1976, with the second phase bringing 40 additional stores and the second anchor, Peterson Harn von Marr. JCPenney would open as the third anchor in March 1977, 
bringing the total mall area to 900,000 square feet of leaseable retail space, becoming the largest mall in Des Moines and instantly the hit mall in the city. In the 1980s, the mall was a wild success. West Des Moines was the fastest growing suburb in Iowa with its retail sales up 580%, and Valley West was the biggest attributing factor to that. With 123 total stores and three massive anchors, the mall was vastly exceeding expectations. And throughout the 90s, the mall would continue to thrive, with a brand new food court being constructed, and several renovations would take place to keep the mall up to that modern standard. When walking through, you really get a sort of appreciation for the architecture in this mall. From the glistening fountain in the center, and the tall trees and fake planters dotted all over, to the tall orange pillars which strike you with that 70s look. But the best feature of them all coming up here is the Neon Ocean Food Court after this. Right here is Von Mar, and this location is confirmed to be leaving this fall for Jordan Creek. Mall owners and remaining tenants have publicly admitted that this will be the death blow to Valley West, and the food court here, which is already losing tenants, will probably and sadly be the first to go. I don't know what was going on in this empty food stall, but it sounded like a jet engine starting up. So I don't know if that was something to be worried about, but god dang, you can hear that thing from all the way across the mall. In 1996, the first plans for what would kill Valley West would start to materialize. West Des Moines would approve zoning for the construction of a new development, the village at Oak Creek, on the western edge of the city close to the booming suburb of Waukee. Over the next few years, the plan would morph into a mega mall with more than 1.5 million square feet of space, four anchors, a sports training center, a lake with ultra-modern restaurants and a hotel, and a 20-screen megaplex movie theater with a massive ice skating rink. These would be the first plans for Jordan Creek. As you can see while I'm walking along here, almost everyone in the mall were mall walkers. I was here on uh, Thursday at noon and everyone was either mall walking or tending to their kids because Valley West's second biggest attraction behind the mall being a track essentially is its children's museum so you've just got a bunch of parents bringing their kids here and that's essentially the mall's two main sources of people. In 2000, the mall hit its peak, and it would only go downhill from there. Just a year later, plans for Jordan Creek would be finalized as the new largest mall in Iowa. Dillard's would initially show interest in Valley West as a potential fourth anchor, 
however, would drop out and opt for Jordan Creek, ultimately the right move. And Valley West would undergo massive renovations during 2003 to combat the opening of Jordan Creek, which would give it the modern, beautiful look it has today. However, these would be unsuccessful with the opening of Jordan Creek that same year. With immediate drops in traffic at all other Des Moines malls, the supermassive Jordan Creek was now the number one shopping destination in Des Moines. And here in this closed store, we have the bargain cave <laughs> in the back. You guys want to go back there? Find some bargains? They might also have some free candy. <laughs> Oh, I love this place. It's it's good to find humor in such a depressing mall. As the 2000s crept on, more stores started to leave Valley West for the new mall. In 2007, Iowa State University did an assessment and found that Valley West Mall in the area around it had some of the lowest sales in retail in the entire Des Moines metro, a sharp contrast to just seven years prior. The mall was dying fast and it was running out of time to do something about it. In this coming up shot here, you're gonna see the amassing of mall walkers. Um, <laughs> look at them all. You know, I really, I really respect dead malls and what they're able to do for these people, giving them an empty place of solitude to work out and get their steps in. How kind. As the 2000s came and dragged on, things at Valley West were getting dire. While all other Des Moines malls were renovating or converting, Valley West just kinda hung on to what it was, the old 70s mall now starting to show its age. In 2018, Yonkers would close as part of going out of business, and the massive store remains vacant to this day, as a huge hole in the mall's lineup. And in 2019, Von Maher announced plans to relocate to Jordan Creek. It plans to open this fall and close their Valley West store, which store owners have agreed will be the end of Valley West. Um, when I was here two years ago, this mall still felt like it had a little bit of life in it, whether it was the food court neons or the beautiful architecture and skylights. But coming back in 2022, this mall just feels tired and old, and owners are doing nothing to change that. Dream, believe, and achieve. Well, I'll tell you what, this mall is definitely dreaming. Believing, I don't know, but achieving, probably the least of those three. Right here in the center court is a really nice train ride for the kids. And there was someone working in that booth, but she looked so bored. And I believe she probably hadn't had a customer all day. It's just depressing. Are you in track with the Jordans?
So what's going to happen at Valley West? Well, plans over the years have been put forward to partly demolish the mall and copy Jordan Creek and all its outdoor success. But nothing's happened for it yet, and I think that any way of saving this mall is gone. But how much longer will the doors be open to see the beautiful mall like it is? Not long, so if you're in the area, please stop by and support Valley West, or just bask in the beautiful, plant-filled halls of wondrous neon utopia. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching today's episode. It was so good being back here. Next week we'll be heading north for the final days of a very special mall. I want to thank you all for 1,000 subscribers. You guys have given me so many opportunities and I never would be where I am without you, so thank you. Anyways, I'll see you all next week. Peace out. See you later, guys.